Hi guys, my name is Tria and I am a junior doctor working in London. Last year I graduated from Oxford Medical School. Today I'm going to talk about the GCSE and A-level results that got me into Oxford. When people talk about Oxford and Cambridge, they often talk about how academics are really, really important. They talk about how Oxford and Cambridge value grades very highly when it comes to selecting applicants. So I agree with this. I think that when it comes down to it, academic rigour and grades are very, very important. Obviously, when it comes to medical school, they will look at other things, such as work experience, extracurricular activities, and how you perform an interview, because they are looking to find well-rounded individuals who will make good doctors but fundamentally the academic side is the most important. Another thing to consider is that Oxford and Cambridge will expect a very high level when it comes to grades but it's also about how well you perform in comparison to your peers. So for example if you go to a very high performing school where the average is that most people get eights and nines at GCSC or A stars at A level, if you go to a school like that then you have to obviously be the best in your school or towards the top of the class but if you go to a school where very few people do A levels and most people don't get A's then even having one A will show how much of a good student you are in comparison. So it really is relative um, and there's a lot less leeway if you come from a very good school but you only have average marks. Now this is obviously just my opinion having been in Oxford for six years but I think most people will agree that getting good grades is really important. Let me start by talking about GCSEs. For GCSEs I took the compulsory subjects which are maths, English language, English literature, biology, chemistry, physics and then I also took further maths, history, History, geography, Latin and German. So 11 subjects in total. I think for me personally I revised very very hard for my GCSEs and this was primarily motivated by fear. So fear of failure and fear of not doing well in my exams because these were the first board exams I had done so I was just really I had no idea what to expect to be honest. I think my hard work paid off because of the grades that I got. So back when I was doing GCSEs we had letter grades instead of numbers so an A star would be the equivalent of an 8 or a 9. So for my GCSEs I got 10 A stars and then for further maths the highest grade was an A and I got an A. So overall I was very happy. In terms of revision I definitely revised very very hard. In year 11 during our Easter holidays and our study leave I revised from anywhere between 6 to 10 hours a day and to be honest looking back I think that revising 10 hours a day was unsustainable and definitely too much because I then sacrifice things like exercise or having a work-life balance. In retrospect, you know, as I've gotten older and I have gotten used to doing exams, I've definitely incorporated a more realistic schedule where I factor in things like going for walks, taking water breaks and making sure I keep up my other extracurricular activities and interests and don't just study all day. GCSEs were very stressful and I ended up getting quite unwell just before my exams, but because I had revised so much, I then could actually make up for that in the papers themselves. So I I remember being really really ill during my geography exam and not really being able to think much but it was all ingrained inside me anyway so it was all right. Uh, in terms of when to revise, I tell students this when they talk to me now, I think the most important thing for year 10 students is to make the most of that summer holiday that you have between year 10 and year 11 because this is a really valuable time to get up to scratch with your revision. Now I'm not saying to revise the whole summer, I really don't think that that's good either. You should definitely spend at least half your time just having fun and doing what you want but I think that summer is a really good time to make sure that all your notes from year 10 are up to scratch so make sure that you've prepared all your revision notes for the subjects that you studied in year 10 because in year 11 you'll have one term where you're studying lots of new things and then suddenly it'll be time for mocks and then the real exams come very very quickly but if you've already got a good foundation knowledge from year 10, then you're already one step ahead of the game. So when it comes to year 11, most people have the mock exams in December or January time. And I would say definitely take these seriously because it's a really good practice run. And then I would say the best time to ramp up revision is Easter holidays just before the exams start. If you follow my advice, by the time you get to actual study leave, you'll already have clocked up a lot of hours when it comes to revision. So now I'm gonna talk about some tips that I think are really important when it comes 
comes to revising, tip number one is to study according to your own body clock. For example, I'm the sort of person who really hates studying in the morning. I find it really difficult to get up early and I really don't work well then. So what I generally did when I was revising was I wouldn't force myself to get up at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. I would usually get up at around 9 and start revision a bit later, so 10 or 11. I then personally found that I worked quite well in the evenings, so that's when I would do the bulk of my revision. I also personally find that immediately after lunch, 2 or 3 p.m., I also have a very noticeable dip in my productivity. So I would generally spend that hour doing something else like um, going for a walk or reading or doing something that's not revision just because I know that I won't be productive. Tip number two is to do your revision in short bursts. A really good technique to use is the Pomodoro technique where you work for 25 minutes and then you take a break for five minutes. So I would generally do this twice in one hour. You'll end up revising for 15 minutes and having a 10 minute break. But I personally think that if you can be very strict with yourself about working for those 25 minutes, then overall you'll be more productive than just sitting at your desk for an hour. So when I would start the Pomodoro, I would make a personal vow not to open social media or my phone or anything, even though obviously that's quite difficult. Because I personally find that I would get distracted quite easily, especially if what I was doing was kind of boring. I also think it's really good to develop these good revision techniques early on, because say for example, if you start revising in year 10 or in the summer after year 10, you have some time to then experiment with different revision techniques and revising at different times of day and things like that. So by the time you get to your actual GCSEs or your A-levels, then you will have already established quite a good revision schedule. Whereas if you don't really revise at all, and then you end up getting to the couple of weeks before the exams and you realize that you don't have any method, you'll end up cramming, staying up all night and all day, and that's not good for your health and that's not gonna help you with your exams anyway. So now I'm going to talk about a typical day of studying. So this would be in study leave or on the weekend where I won't have to go to school. Because I think that 10 hours a day is actually kind of unrealistic, I'm going to talk about a day where I would study eight hours. You can definitely use this as a model or a structure that you can follow, but make sure to adjust it for your own body clock as well. Let's say on a typical Monday, I would wake up at around 8.30 a.m. and have breakfast. I'd give myself around an hour and a half to have breakfast, watch TV, and just get the day started. I'd then start revision at 10 and do 10 to 12 as a solid block of two hours. Obviously within this time, I would use the Pomodoro technique. So 25 minutes on, five minutes off but two hours in total. So then I would give myself about 15 minutes of break. So 12 to 12.15, I would just get up, have a drink, make a cup of tea, that kind of thing. It's also good to factor in buffering time in your schedule because what I used to do before was schedule my day to the minute. But then if, for example, I had to answer the door, I got a phone call, that would completely throw my whole schedule off. Between 12 and 12.15, I'd have a break and then I would study for one more hour between 12.15 and 1.15. So that's three hours in total in the morning. So I would take my lunch break, watch TV, TV. And then as I mentioned, I find revising immediately after lunch quite difficult. So what I would do is I would then go for my afternoon walk. And generally I would probably only walk for a half an hour to 45 minutes because I didn't really feel like I have enough time to do anything else. But in this time you can maybe go swimming or do whatever exercise makes you feel good. So then I would generally do all this between 1.15 and 3. Then between 3 to 5 I'd work two more hours solidly with the Pomodoro technique. By this time I've had my lunch, I've had my walk and I'm refreshed and ready to go. Then I'd factor in another sort of break between 5 and 5.30 and work for another hour between 5.30 and 6.30. Already factored in six hours of revision before the evening. Then between 6.30 and 8.30 I wouldn't do any revision and I would talk to my family and have a shower and have dinner and that kind of thing. And then I would work between 8.30 and 10.30. To be honest, for me, these two hours are the most productive where I feel the most engaged and my mind is ready to learn and take in new things. I definitely wouldn't push this too late because although I said I'm not a morning person, I'm also not the type of person who can stay up revising very, very late, past midnight and so on. So I would be quite strict about then finishing at 10.30 and wrapping things up and getting to bed by 11.30, which then gives me a solid amount of sleep for the next day. So in that day, I would have worked eight hours quite solidly. So this is the sort of thing that I would also do for my A-levels. So for my A-levels, I did four subjects for year 12 and four subjects for year 13. So I studied biology, chemistry, physics and maths and did them both for the two years. When I was doing A-levels, we had AS levels in year 12 and A2 in year 13. In AS, the highest grade you could get was an A. For year 12, I got four A's in biochem, physics and maths. And then in year 13, the highest grade you could get was an A-star. I got an A-star in biology and an A 
in chemistry, physics and maths. So my offer for Oxford was A star AAA and this is exactly what I got so that's why I went to Oxford. So when I was in A levels I didn't revise 10 hours a day, I think the max that I revised was about 8 hours and you might be asking why did I not get 4 A stars at A2 for example and to be honest I think the reason why I didn't get 4 A stars was because in year 13 I was focusing on a lot more things, not just A-levels. So I was focusing on getting into Oxford, getting into the other medical schools that I applied to. So those were Imperial College London, King's College London and Queen Mary's. Because all of that takes up time as well, I had to balance my time between studying and doing other things. That being said, I worked as hard as I could given the circumstances. So then I adopted quite similar techniques for revision when it came to A-levels. But having gone through the system once, I realised that it was much more sustainable to work eight hours or six hours rather than 10 hours. I was able to remain healthy throughout the whole of my exam period and not get sick. And to be honest, thinking back, I probably got sick during my GCSEs because I was working so much and I didn't give my body a break. So I think that working less hours is definitely more sustainable but I was still able to achieve my goal of going to Oxford. Then having spent six years in Oxford, I have refined this work-life balance even more, but that's something I can talk about in another video. Generally, what I would say is to make sure that you start revising early so that you don't have to cram towards the end. And I personally found it quite useful to stick to a schedule with timings. I know that some people prefer to do task-based revisions, so they want to do these specific tasks in a day and they wouldn't really look at the times, but I personally found it much easier to stick to specific times. The way I would track my progress is I would use an Excel spreadsheet and I would put all the timings in a sheet and I would fill a box in green if I have completed that hour so that positive feedback really helped me to stay motivated and keep on track. I hope that was useful and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions let me know. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.